Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Max and today I'm doing a first impression playthrough of Sleeping Dogs. This is um, for the PlayStation 3 and it is available free for PlayStation Plus users. So if you are a PlayStation Plus user and you have at least 6 gigs in your hard drive left, I'd recommend downloading it and trying it out. Uh, this this playthrough uh, will contain... Uh, We'll uh, have some of the uh, combat and uh, a lot of the interaction uh, with the uh, game's characters and environments. Uh, this will not actually have any of the driving scenes yet. It's 30 minutes into the game. It doesn't have a single driving scene. That's kind of weird for uh, a sandbox title, but the world doesn't even open up yet. So this is more of a, a tutorial, if you will, to give you guys a, an understanding of what you're going to, of what to expect when uh, when starting this game up. Now I want to talk a little bit into the history into this game. Uh, now this was developed by United Front Games and Square Enix of London, and it was published by Square Enix and Namco Bandai. Uh, it was released on August 14, 2012 for the Xbox, the uh, PlayStation 3, and the PC. And now this was originally supposed to be called True Crime Streets of Hong Kong. This would have been the uh, third installment in the True Crime series, the first one being True Crime Streets of LA and its follow up, True Crime Streets of New York. Uh, in this game, you do play a cop just like in the other two True Crime games, but this one is, uh, is a uh, undercover cop who actually did grow up in the mean streets of Hong Kong. And uh, now he's coming full circle, coming back again to infiltrate uh, the triads and uh, his finding out that all his friends have uh, joined into the triad. So he's kind of betraying his friends and at the same time trying to bring justice to Hong Kong. So this would be a very, uh, this is a very interesting uh, game. Kind of reminds you of The Departed uh, as far as like uh, undercover, undercover and families are concerned, you know, trying to be undercover in the place where he grew up. Uh, the game consists a lot of Arkham City style um, combat. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, I can say this much right now. It is nowhere as responsive as Arkham City. Now let's go back to what I was talking about here about it uh, being a uh, true crime streets of Hong Kong. I guess there was a lot of problems uh, as far as... Uh, the development being delayed, uh, the uh, game going over budget, and uh, I guess when it started becoming over budget, Activision Blizzard decided to go ahead and just cancel the game. And uh, once the game was canceled, six months, well, let me say that again, six months after its cancellation, Square Enix went ahead and got the rights to it and decided to, excuse me, uh, decided to finish the game and, uh, and that's why it's coming out now at the uh, ass end of the uh, the console generation. But, I don't know. This console generation to me has been a really... Uh, been a very interesting one. It'll definitely be uh, a topic of uh, one of my uh, vlogs that I'll be doing. Probably next... Uh, probably do one next Tuesday about the console generation. But this year has become a really, really good year. When every other year seemed like this is the year of multiplayer and co-op games... This year seems to be the year of like the return of the single player campaign and it's come back with a vengeance with games like Far Cry 3 and uh, Bioshock and even games like Sleeping Dogs. Now this game was, this is one of those games that were kind of, you know, uh, brushed under the carpet. It was kind of overlooked because of other games that just, a lot of people saw this game as, ah, oh, this is just a knockoff for um, Grand Theft Auto and, and, and even Saints Row, which uh, that game itself is uh, considered a knockoff of the GTA series. To me, this game has much more of a narrative, if you will. This is supposed to be like you're playing an open world film that's based in, uh, that's based in uh, uh, Hong Kong. Now, one thing that is that should be really noted is the cast. Now, one of uh, a really good actor, actually, we're about to hear his voice in a minute. 
his name is Tom Wilkinson. Now, this is an actor who's been around for, for years. And uh, he's his most notable role to date right now is playing Falcone in uh, the uh, Batman Returns. I do like the interaction with these two characters right here. And I can't tell if the main character is Nolan North or not. Now, for all those who don't know, Nolan North is actually... Uh, He's the voice of, uh, of uh, Deadpool. He's also the voice of Nathan Drake. And yeah, he's also the voice of Booker DeWitt. So yeah, Nolan North has been around for a while. Now I'm not sure if he's the the voice of this guy. Kind of sounds like him though. And I wouldn't be surprised if, it, if it's not him. Hey, so you still in touch with any of the guys from there? A few, you know. People kind of go their separate ways, but... You remember Winston? He's moved all the way up to Red Pole in the sun on ye. Got a couple of things going with him right now, matter of fact. Huh. Red Pole in the sun on ye. Shit, Dog Guys always said he'd be running that neighborhood. Oh, Dog Guys is a Red Pole too. He's still a total poke guy. He was the one who got Winston in. They were pretty tight back then, but now. Hey, wasn't Dog Guys hanging? Guy seems like a junkie, doesn't he? The guy next I mean the guy you're talking to? He's like that that loser friend that you've had that you've tried to tell the hey man you need to straighten up and shit and he just doesn't want to listen to you and he just like sits there and keeps doing a bunch of just a bunch of dumb shit you know what I mean he seems like that guy and whoever's doing the voice acting is really selling the uh, really selling the animation that's going with it. it that actually fits I do like that of course man look me up when you get out just be like old times. There's a lot of really good voice actors. You, I don't know if you've been noticing all the names like Lucy Liu and whatnot. I mean, uh, even Emma Stone somewhere in here. I don't know where she is, but that's cool by me. I love me some Emma Stone, man. You guys remember her from uh, uh what was that movie? movie? Oh yeah, Super Bad. That was like her first movie. You, to yeah, I loved her in that How movie. She was cool. You must be a very Here's Tom Wilkinson. Man, That is exactly what we want people to think. I trust that my men weren't too rough on you, officer. You might ask them the same question, sir. Those guys are out of shape. It paid off, though. I made contact with Jackie Ma. I'm in. Good work. Use him to get close to Winston Chu. Do whatever it takes. Raymond here will be your handler. You'll report everything through him. Our intel suggests that Winston is looking for muscle. You need to find a way to make him trust you. I've done this before. Not in Hong Kong. American gangs, even Asian ones, don't compare to the triads here. The Sun on Yi is the most powerful Look, gang. Raymond, your, your name is Raymond, right? Yes. I grew up with these guys. I know who they are, what they are. All the intel reports in the world won't give you that. We want the Red Poles, the lieutenants like Winston, all of them. And most of all, the Dragon Head. Candidly, Wei, previous attempts to get close to him haven't panned out. We don't have much to go on. That's why you're here. I'm hoping that you can I love this guy's voice, man. To our investigation. I understand, sir. Look, the sooner I'm on the street, the sooner I can start. Raymond will be in touch. Owen Way. Good luck out there. Respectfully, sir. Are you sure about him? He'll be under extreme stress, maybe for a very long time. Now, I'm not sure he has the discipline to hold up. According to the file, he has a history of... of extreme behavior. Yes, and an astonishing number of convictions. He obviously blames the triads for what happened to his family. It could turn into a vendetta. Raymond, Wei Shen is perfect for this job. Now that was cool. Yeah, I, I like the interaction. I thought that scene was pretty well uh, pretty well made. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the uh, hand gestures. It was, everything, when you see, when you see like game characters with too many hand gestures, they, they look less realistic. They start to look more like puppets. And I know they're trying to 
you know, make their characters a little bit more animated or, you know, a little bit more articulated or whatnot. But sometimes, you know, it's a real fine line between doing it right and then just overdoing it. And that line is, we're talking very, like, like very thin thread, uh, thread thin, if you know what I mean. I like this right here. Look at this environment. Everything has like a, a I like the old like uh, ambience, this uh, the overall look, the whole like like the old structures mixed with like uh, mixed with like uh, uh, clothing, like new style of clothing and uh, cell phones. You can hear like cell phones in the background. Yeah, you're going to this old like this old store where it looks like it was built in the 19 like 40s and 50s. Uh, to me, that's kind of cool. It's like it's like. They really respect their tradition and whatnot, and um, perhaps uh, uh, now, uh, as far as building inspectors, they, you know, they're probably not taking too kindly to all that. But I don't think there's really uh, building inspectors over there. If there is, I have yet to to know about it. Now we're about to get into some of the combat here, and you're gonna see real. You're gonna just see through this gameplay. You can tell that um, something's a little bit off. With the combat. Uh, the low times are pretty good too. For a PS3 title, that's not bad. Of course, they should be a little bit shorter because of the fact that it's being saved on the hard drive and not on a uh, on a Blu-ray disc, which, uh, by the way, is supposed to be lightning fast when it comes to delivering. Uh, information uh, so anyway let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about this combat here um, now as you're pulling off animations you're actually prone to being attacked from a different direction from a different angle so somebody else can punch you while you're punching another guy and you have really no way to block that now there is a counter button that is uh, introduced in the uh, next fighting sequence however it doesn't really work that well. In fact, it seems to be a little bit unresponsive and somewhat broken because of the fact that while you're being attacked from the uh, from behind during a uh, during a uh, uh, combination animation combination animation that, that rhymes, didn't it? Anyway, during that animation, you are still prone to counter. You're still prone to being attacked from behind, and. If you pushed too, if you press too many buttons, and then hit the uh, counter button, it will not respond, because it had recognized all these other combinations of buttons up until the uh, the uh, uh, counter button, so it doesn't register. So you have to be very precise with your punches and kicks. You have to like. You know, like punch, punch, exactly. Don't hit the punch button too many times, and then expecting the uh, expecting the uh, uh, the uh, counter attack to cancel out everything else. It just won't do it. That should be patched. I think Square should actually patch that to make it a little bit more responsive. Then, only then it will feel a lot more like playing Arkham City. Arkham City is one of those games that gets combat right. It understands combat, and it has to because that game has an emphasis on exploration and combat. Combat is like a huge part of that game. Now with Sleeping Dogs, it's supposed to be more of an open world where you have a blend of combat as well as driving and uh, uh, and you know looking for things and just searching through the environment. Very sandbox. Very, very sandbox. Open world. Now, it's funny how a game like that, it ha a game like Sleeping Dogs kind of went through the cracks. It kind of went just under the carpet because of the fact that this game tries really hard to be different than the other games. It takes the best elements from games that, that I enjoy or you enjoy, we all enjoy, and puts it together in this one game and critically critically it was kind of panned for it I mean by guys like IGN even angry, even angry Joe was not very impressed with it 
However, uh, other publications and websites like Screw Attack actually uh, put this in its top 10 of games that you could be playing besides Halo and Call of Duty. Screw Attack recognized it for being different. And it's isn't it funny that when we get like a game like Call of Duty, you know, or, or, or Battlefield and whatnot, and we're like, God, can't this game be any different? Oh, God, I want something different. Blah, blah, blah. And people like whine and complain about how it's the same. And then we get a game like Sleeping Dogs that tries very hard to be different. And when we get it, we're complaining that it's not the same. I think that's so funny. You know, it's just people are weird. You know what I mean? What the? Oh yeah, they're talking about this uh, this guy's sister. Sorry. Oh, you see her. So, ten guys, huh? You feel this? I just crazy. Try capable. We'll see. Conroy, you know that problem we got in the market? Why don't you take way with you? Jackie. Oh, somebody's jealous. Moving up in the world and hey, he beat up ten guys, man. All right, you want to be a tough guy? Let's see if you can handle yourself. You know, I look at the main character with the jacket and everything, and for some reason, I'm reminded of Shenmue. Uh, Shenmue came out in the uh, Sega Dreamcast, considered the uh, the best game on the system. I uh, disagree. I actually don't like it at all but I respect it for what it is I don't hate it I just you know it's not my cup of tea so here's the counter attack thing that I was talking about and you know I'll push it and sometimes it won't work and again it's because of uh, button registration like it'll recognize only if it'll recognize the buttons that you pushed up until you push the counter button Again, you've got to be precise. I know I sound like a broken record, but you've got to know your button combinations. That way, you use just the right amount of buttons to pull off the combo. That way, you at least have the counter button ready for you when the time is right. And that time will happen often. As you can see, these guys blink red a lot when they start to flash red. That means you need to be quick on the draw with the uh, triangle button. And that's the counter button, of course, the triangle button. Hello, boy. Otherwise, stuff like this happens. Of course, they're just roughing this guy up before, uh, before they go through their little uh, mission or whatnot. I like the uh, the colors in this game. Everything's very vibrant. The lighting's pretty good. I do like the uh, all the characters. They uh, they don't feel lifelike. Everything has much more of a uh, cartoon feel to it, and uh, I don't mind that. I think that works. This game doesn't try to be over realistic. Um, there is a lot of uh, hyper realistic things going on as far as like cracks in the streets looking bigger than they should um, emphasis on muscles uh, over emphasis on the uh, on the characters being oily and whatnot it looks like they haven't showered in ages you know obviously your main character has been through a few fights so you can see their sweat but all these guys look like they've been very uh, these characters you can almost smell them uh, you know this character right here that he's talking to right here. This is Dog Eyes, and I actually feel that like this character kind of in, is kind of insulting to the Asian community because he just seems like the stereotypical guy, and he shouldn't be, you know. And he's using that. You could tell he speaks English very well, and yet the, the uh, he emphasizes the uh, his accent very well. It almost seems very insulting, if you will, because I know some Asian. I I know. I know Asian people who can speak English better than hell. They speak English better than I do. They emphasize everything. They uh, they uh, pronunciate everything very well. They have they really know how to speak it better than a lot of. And hell, they speak it better than rednecks. 
And so to me, with that, with all that in mind, and all of a sudden I see a character like Dog Eye shows up. I'm like, oh man, get get that shit out of here. You know, all the interactions in the game seem pretty good right up into Dog Eyes. Maybe he's just doing that to, maybe the character's just there to, to piss you off. And if that's the case, you know, the the dialogue and the story should sell it just fine. The the really horrible horrible accent shouldn't be a factor. <laughs> He's tried so hard not to insult his friend there. It's kind of weird the uh, the character uh, interactions when the when you come close to somebody and they actually kind of move out of the way, even though it doesn't look like you actually pushed them at all. They kind of it's kind of weird. Again, I love the look of this game so far. The uh, the backgrounds, the set pieces, everything just looks really well well done. And for somebody who's never been to uh, uh, Asian countries, you know, this is a, a, a treat for me. It's to me, this is like a good way to travel, if you will, uh, a very safe way to travel. You know, if you want to go to a different world or a different time, you know, pick up a video game. You can pretty much experience all that if done right. You can really um, get that experience from your own home. And uh, Sleeping Dogs is definitely one of those games I would recommend if you ever wanted to uh, travel and are, are not able to afford it or just you know you're not a, you're just not physically able to travel this is one of those games that will really be a, a feast for your eyes and um, another game this reminds me of and this really takes me back to an older game a uh, game that came out I'd say a little bit early in the uh, the Xbox 360 life it was actually one of the newer games for the uh, PS3 when it came out and that is Stranglehold uh, Stranglehold was uh, directed by John Woo. It's it starred um, Chow Yun Fat, or is it Fat Chow Yun? I, I don't know. But um, the backgrounds and everything is just really cool. Again, the the emphasis. I've always been amazed by the uh, traditional look of um, Hong Kong, of how the uh, of how like the structures are, how everything is built. You have all this um, old, like uh, older buildings, older structures, and whatnot, and then you see like, and then you see like a, a technology put into it, like a like. Think of an old, an old Hong Kong temple with an Xbox 360 in it. You know what I mean? Almost like a clash in in, in uh, cultures, you know, or a clash in in, in years, if you will. But it works, and they make it work, and to me that's awesome. I really commend, I really commend the, uh, I really commend uh, uh, um, Asian people for for doing something like that, for carrying on their tradition, but at the same time adapting something new, and not staying, and not being, you know, they're open to to newer things, but again, keeping with tradition, if you will. Here we go again with that combat that I was telling you about. That was a weird camera thing. Uh, one thing I want to make note of is the camera. The camera really is zoomed out properly. That means you can you can actually keep you can actually keep your character in view, but at the same time be able to use your peripherals to see everything around you. This is really well done, and this is really essential to a third-person title. Now, let's, let's think of an example of a bad way to do camera. Uh, let's go with Resident Evil 6, where the camera's too zoomed in, and then you see more of your character than you do the backgrounds. And it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of a disservice to the, uh, to the developers who actually worked on those backgrounds, and it actually does a disservice to the, uh, to the fans and the players because they want to be able to take in all that they can't because they're being obstructed by their own player by their own by their own uh, character 
Now, in a first-person game, it's really not a big deal. because If the pacing is right, like uh, Bioshock Infinite, you can see all the... You have a chance to to slow down and check out all the uh, the set pieces and all the backgrounds and the, you know, the overall design. There's nothing really obstructing your view besides the gun. And if done right, if the gun is well designed, it doesn't obstruct you at all. Again, a game like... So, it's again, a, another example of third person uh, view done right. Yes, it is very reasonable. Give me the money. It's funny how this guy is talking about me getting new clothes, and then I see this guy wearing a wife beater, like an untucked wife beater with like faded jeans and just bad tattoos. And again, that that shiny skin looking like the the shiny textures on the skin looking like the the people that he hasn't showered in ages so the guy probably needs a bath and a new set of clothes and here he is telling me that i need a wardrobe okay so i'm going to go ahead and change my shirt and whatnot it really isn't much of a difference here perhaps later in the game i can uh I can, uh, uh, you know, play dress up <laughs> better or whatnot. So I'm just going to make a few different changes here. There's really nothing I could uh, do there. There really isn't a selection. Not to mention, I don't. I probably don't have enough yen to to uh, get anything. So yeah. Now I'm looking frumpy. <laughs> I don't, man. You gotta blame my wife for that word, cause uh, see, recently she lost over 160 pounds, and so all the so a lot of the clothes that she wears these days are very loose on her, and her coworker her coworkers refer to her wardrobe as or when she looks when she wears her clothing, it, you know they they say that she looks frumpy. So now I'm looking at my character, and I'm thinking that word frumpy. Yeah, I gotta thank my wife one day for coming up with some. Weird dial for some weird words. Yeah? Would you see? I tell you what I didn't see. Nothing to be impressed about. I'm watching you, you guy. You fuck up what? We're gonna throw down? This guy's uh, got a sinister this, huh? look to him. I mean, the sinister voice and the, the face doesn't really match up. Jackie, you're coming with me. We got something to take care of. And you don't fuck with me. Yeah, definitely uh he's definitely jealous there. And so um I believe we're coming to the end of this playthrough. And uh I gotta uh you know Besides of the uh, besides the fact that there isn't really the world isn't open yet, it just seems like it's a pretty good introduction to a very very um, overlooked game, and uh, I definitely am looking forward to playing some more of it. And uh, I'm debating whether or not to play this game live or to go ahead and just uh, have it pre-recorded and do it this way. I'm gonna leave that to you guys. Uh, so. Please uh, check out this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you do want to see more. And please comment below if you would like to see this game. Um, if you'd like to see me do this in parts or you like to, or you would like to see it uh, live. If you do it live, of course, there will be some interaction. I would love to go ahead and connect with you guys. Now, if that's going to be live, it's going to be on twitch.tv slash gotgame. And that will be on the show Got Game Live. It is a show that I'm trying to uh, really... Uh, revive and really um do more with um i will of course have uh, guests like a flunky and probably kill Atia from got game and who knows i'll probably get more until next time thank you for watching and stay true stay you